I think we've got some new chipper teeth arrived. Yeah. Guess how much they are though? Little guide plates from Comtech in Austria. We'll have a guess. There should be a box of teeth in here. 32 teeth. That's the teeth. They all come individually wrapped in wax paper with a little plastic cover on them. See? I think they're about four quid each. That's a new tooth compared to an old one. See, that's just like a spoon, that blunt. So that's razor sharp. Andrew's just changing them now and he's putting a new guide on where it's fell off. That stops it taking too big a bite, a bit like a chainsaw, as a guide before the, the hook. Sorry for the beeping, but the Merlot said it needs a regen. So I think you turn the boom off with that key and then you press that button and it'll rev up on its own for about 45 minutes now and it'll burn its exhaust stuff off and clean the particle filter. It'll uh, get hot now, it'll burn all the rubbish out of that filter. You can actually see that sort of smoke coming out of it. You can really see it chuffing it out from here. I don't quite know how that works really, because it's obviously collects all the particles and then throws them out. Just doing a final washout. So this will be the third one on a field that's a stubble. It's going to be spring beans. So it shouldn't affect the beans if it, it does have a trace of curb in it. And if anything, it'll kill some of the grass weeds over the winter as well before we drill the beans. So got the pressure right up just to get rid of the water as fast as possible but it's as still as anything and then I'm going to go and try and finish all the wheat today as well and Sam's going to maybe try and get that headland done that was too wet to do the other week or at least try and get 90% of it done. Thanks to everyone that sent the congratulations yesterday, most messages I think I've ever had for a video so uh, that was nice. I've tried to reply to everyone if I haven't I'm sorry but um, I had like I don't know I think it was 250 messages or something like that so nice that everyone's happy about it as well as me so thank you. Christine's filling a mini Merlot up. I've just filled this up. Well, mostly. Right on time. I know you just keep spraying. Also, Chris has sent me a picture. He's got the plough on his wagon. It is on its way. It'll be here around midday. So, that's exciting. We get leaves everywhere near Christine's. Brushing them up, shoving them into the chip pile. They'll go in the biomass boil and get used. Andrew's smashing through the pile now. We're trying to get the yard as empty as we can. Ready for December, because obviously we've got the track run. We've got to fit 100 odd tractors in here. So we just need to get, get going on that chip pile. Filling up with water and manganese into the sprayer. So nearly full on about 4,400 leaves. Anyway, let's do the birthday bumper while we're waiting. So <laughs> still got the question mark on from the other day for the will you marry me? Yes, I think the answer was yes. Um, there we go, Teddy Corkill, Ruby Morgan, Lewis Duffy, Jonah Pryor or Jonah, I don't know how you sell it, Lucy Ogden, Paul Storer, George Speed, Rebecca Lovely, cracking name. Cowan, Cowan, is it? Anyway, happy birthday to all you guys. Back now spraying wheat. This is a field of wheat that was after oilseed rape. And there was a few sort of uh, patches. We bailed the straw quite late. And I don't think it got straw rape, and you'll see. So I'll flip the camera around and I'll show you when we're going through the field. And you'll see the bits where the straw rape's not been on and it's not distributed the chaff or the straw. We've had sort of slow pressure underneath the yeah, so if you look there, you can see obviously we've got like nice green rows and then where the row of straw is with the baler didn't quite pick it up properly, the slugs have just raised it and it's the same that side as well. So we've got some sort of thin burr patches. But on a whole, the field looks pretty good. But if we'd have straw raked it on a diagonal and distributed that chaff, killed any slugs that was in it, any slug eggs, then we wouldn't have got that problem. It was just a bit of an oversight, this field. It's only a 10 acre block and um, we got forgotten about which is a shame. Bit of a wet patch here, but luckily, because we've got 12 metre tram lines, I'm just shifting them over, so we'll just go down the edge of it. Hopefully, we won't sink too much. See a bit of grass weed in this wheat here. It did have a pre but it's not particularly working. We might have to get on this before wintering, try and knock some of this out. Now, I know I just said the pre hadn't worked. Well, if you look now by my feet, you've just got nice rows of corn. And if we go this way a little bit, see that? It's like a lawn. 
can see a complete line where it's worked to. It's a triangle mist. Let me zoom the camera. So if you look here, there's a line. That's weedy. That's not. That's clean. Not really any grass weeds between the roads. Up there, loads of grass weeds. And you can see where I've come along with the boom there. Now, I think I sprayed this in the dark and I don't know how I missed it because it is GPS. But I've come along there and it's missed this triangle here. And it just shows you how well the spray works. Free emerging sprays. And obviously, it's like, it's a paler colour because the, the wheat's nice deep green here because it's got all the whatever nutrients it can. But there, the weeds have stolen it and that's why it's a bit peaky and a bit, a bit greener. But I'll get on top of the cab actually, you can see better this area. There you go, perfect triangle mist. Just shows you it works. Chris is here with the plough and it fills the yard. All the way from Dove Farms. Check him out on YouTube. I think you might have a video of him loading it. I'm gonna lift the headstock round now because the legs aren't on it because obviously it's hanging off the back of the wagon. And we'll get it on the 936 and lift it off. that round now hopefully we can get the tractor on it got the plow on the 936 now Sam's got the front weight block we're gonna two and a half ton on the front and we're gonna go and try it started raining now so I'm not going spraying but we've got the plow on Ian's come for a ride <laughs> we're gonna go and try it at the top of the field there and Ian wants to say happy birthday to you I love you babe <laughs> <laughs> He's getting his tea cup tonight. Yeah, we're gonna go to the <laughs> top of here now. And I'm not gonna go uphill first with the plow. We're gonna start at the top. I'm gonna plow downhill and see how it pulls it like, cause it's all rusty. So we'll go and try it and see what happens. But we've not flailed off the sunflower, so it might do an awful job or it might block. We'll just see. No idea what I'm doing here, but I would say that that's transport. So I think I take that pin out and put them there and then that'll control the depth for the back for a back plow. No idea whether it's set for on land or in for a, but I've folded it over there now and then I'm going to swap that axle. on. No, I'm going to start going first, that's it, let's put it four wheel drive. Step off. That's it, I want to be in first gear. Neutral. First. Four wheel drive. Right. So we go and hopefully that plow will start to size of that for a sunflower stalk it's massive this wheels seized we've got that pin out but we can't get it to pivot round so sam's just got a crowbar now and then that pin needs to come out as well and that linch pin seized in there so we need to tap that out but otherwise the back for us just going in on its own it's got a crowbar in there now so the limit because it's seized out of breath now swinging on the crowbar we've got that round we'll try again now just adjusts and stops on the wheels because the back set of us wasn't going in deep enough. We might have to adjust that as well because I don't think the front's going in deep enough. It's obviously set up for quad track plowing, I think, because it's plowing past the wheeling. Rather, it's like what you call inland rather than in the furrow. Probably have to move that to adjust it. There we go, we're plowing. First time. going. Ten for us. Probably wants to go a little bit deeper but we'll, we'll get it shined up first before we try that. We'll play all the bit as well because we are spinning it now. Right, so I think I'll lift the front now. I'm going to get going and lift the back axle. And then I'll lift that with that. And then we should be out the ground. There we go, 
warm up. Turn over. Go another way. I'm not going to do any more because it's wet and greasy and it'll make too much mess but I'll show you how it turns over so that's ploughing to the right if we pull the switch here that now will flick over and it'll set itself up then for ploughing to the left so what they call a reversible plough there we go well, I'm going to put it in what we call butterfly to take it back in which is so I'll put the pins in now and then pass in transport position. It's not doing too bad a job considering it's ploughing in, you know, two foot of weeds and stalks once we got going with it. It's uh, not done a bad job of burying it. Bit of a worm there chopped in half though. Another one there, not so happy. No seagulls yet though, nicking them. It's a bit of a beast though. See all the wormholes that I've just now destroyed and uprooted. We like them. Look at that, it's like an arrow. This field's probably not been ploughed now since 2004. See how dark the soil is at the top now because it's got all the organic matter in it. But then when you plough it up, it's bright orange. It's hard to see on the camera, but trust me it is. But that's the reason, because it's just so thin, the topsoil and clay. And now we've got all that on the top, which is what we don't like. Seems to have brought half the field back on the tyres, so Sam's just gonna go back to the field, fly up and down, clean the wheels and bring it back. Just took the weight block off. Lifting the suspension back up now. Sam's just got the drill out. He's just gonna top up with wheat seed. And we're just going to patch up that headland that we never got sown because although it's tried drizzling it's probably the driest it's going to be for a good few weeks now because it's forecast rain tomorrow and then coming coming wet all next week so now's the only chance we've got so anyway we finished playing with the plow for a bit pull that over there out of the way we're filming here now because this is real heavy ground yeah, it's an amazing stand on here. It's really took well. It's obviously was bean, so it leaves the soil in good order. It's not flooded yet over winter here too much. There's a little bit there where the bank leaks. But otherwise, it's a, it's a nice crop. So I'm pleased with this. The drill was set up optimum on here. I've saved spraying this field in the dark because it's a little bit wet. I've got the least water on board that I could have. And hopefully I'm as light as possible. And if I make a mess, at least it's dark and I won't see. But this really does need a bit of manganese because it has gone quite yellow. Most of the field is not bad and it's not particularly cut in at all. Like this is the headland where I've already done. But then when you go around this bend here where it gets a bit wetter, it's, uh, it's got some wheel marks sort of up there. Oh, you can't see that, it's too far away. <laughs> but underneath them lights there, it's sunk a bit. Not lights, um, telephone wires. That's just going to move the mini Merlo into here. I can put the sprayer away. It's now filthy. Andrew's smashing the pile. Sam's pushing it up to him now so we can just keep going. It's really flying through because it's dry at the moment. Sounds like there's something inside that. Shut it down now, reverse the bed. Why that panels up, that's not a good sign. Yeah, that's why we have 10 meter Merlots. 
get that chip high as we can. That thing that we put on, that said guess how much, failed. So guess how much, because it was a waste of money. That's nearly it for today, but uh, Mr. Birthday, Emily Holly's birthday, happy birthday to you for today. And also I've got some blue dye and some red dye, which obviously if you use a little bit of it, it's pink. So on Saturday, because we're going for another scan on Friday night, we can hopefully do a reveal with the Bateman, a Bateman baby gender reveal. So that should be fun. So thanks again to everyone that sent this. Congratulations and all that. Amazing. And I will see you tomorrow. We might have someone interesting coming to visit us tomorrow as well, actually, that some of you might also watch on YouTube. So see if you can guess who it is. And I'll see you tomorrow.